Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jambox. We've been going a week strong with the video format, and it's going good so far. As you've seen, there's been some moments, there's been some things, but we're moving right along. I'm so excited to introduce today's guest, but first, let's get the easy stuff out of the way. As always, if you like what you heard, you like what you're hearing, and you think you're going to like what you're going to hear next, hit that follow button. Hit those five stars, like, subscribe, do all the stuff. If you're watching this on YouTube, we're on streaming platforms. If you're listening to this, we're on YouTube. Definitely go check it out. But that's all for that. Let's go ahead and check out who today's guest is. Hey, why not Nate? All right. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Super glad that you're here. Let's uh, let's get the easy stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and have you introduce yourself, where you're from, what you do. Tell us a little bit about Nate. Uh, I'm Why Not Nate. Uh, I grew up in Montana, super small town, nothing there. Uh, graduated high school and went to South Dakota and then Phoenix for a few years and Portland for five years of summer. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. What, uh, what made you move around a little bit? Um, it was mainly just trying to get out of small town. Definitely not like very country, western, small town, Montana. Not me. Um, for some reason, I thought South Dakota would be far enough away, and it wasn't, obviously. <laughs> so picked ASU um, randomly. Uh, I think I saw like a cool video online. I was like, I'll go to their school there oh, <laughs> and like the, transfer. It's like the full sale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I even bounced around in Phoenix quite a bit. Like, I mean, I <clears throat> barely went to ASU. I did some community colleges, and yeah, I got like three or four schools under my belt. <laughs> okay. Now, what got you into uh, videography originally? Um, it was shooting like snowboard videos up on Ski Hill, middle school, high school. Um, that's kind of like where it started. Um, but it was kind of photography that I really wanted to do and then went back into video. Uh, okay. Now, what I guess then what got you into photography originally? Uh, there was a one moment, took a, took a trip with my grandma and she had a camera. I was just taking photos on the trip. I took like a, it's a really bad photo now when you look at it, but like it was cool at the time and uh, everyone was gassing me up. All the family members like, oh, it's really cool. I was like, oh, okay, well, this could be fun. Hell yeah. Um, and kind of just attached to it from there. I mean, hey, that's a good way to start for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, family support. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Nobody can be sad about that. <laughs> now, as this is kind of a music focused show, let's let, let's dive into some of those. Do you play any instruments? Um, I play guitar mostly, like intermediate intermediately well. Um, <laughs> a little bit of everything. I took up a lot of like COVID hobbies. Gotcha. I bought like an e kit. I bought like a MIDI controller, like keyboard. Okay. And, you know, I learned a few things. <laughs> Funny enough, I did the opposite. My oh. COVID hobby was photography. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I'd already done the music thing prior yeah. to that, so I had all that stuff. Now, this is kind of a fun one. This is one we ask early on. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? It was American Idiot by Green Day. Ah, the classics. Yep. The classics. Yep. I still love it, too. Still love Green Day. They get shit on a lot now these days for being uh, I mean, sellouts or like, you know, because they come from a punk scene. But Yeah. I mean, I, I think that a lot of the bands that were like that sound in the beginning, they've all kind of yeah. said, you know, we, we all get older. Yeah. I think there's got to be a consistency at some point. Yeah. Like punk, punk, punk. Punk might not be dead, but uh, <laughs> these knees sure are. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep, like at a certain that. point, at a certain point, it's okay to it's okay to level yeah. out. Like yeah. you know, shout out Metallica. <laughs> mm. I'm 100% selling out if I get the chance to sell out. I mean, I mean, why would I not? If you can make consistent money doing yeah. it, and if you still get to be passionate, I like. I always like to think that even if they're putting out music now that like we who grew up with them don't love, yeah, that they're still having a good time. Yeah. Like you know, Absolutely. I can hope. Like uh, everybody can hope. Like let's, yeah. let's hope that even like that they're doing their vision the way that they want to. Yeah. Now. What was the first show you ever went to that like you got to like choose to go to? Uh, it was a big one. It was Tyler the Creator in Montana. Um, less than 200 people. Whole lot Future Gang was there. Oh, shit. Um, I was in high school. It was right before Wolf came out. Ooh. Uh, so Yonkers had come out. Um, and yeah, it was amazing. That I mean, whole squad was there. And God, 
that, that's going to be such a good show. Yeah, uh, it's definitely like breaking rights when I see where he's at now. Oh yeah, like, I mean Tyler's he, always been such a good performer. Yeah, like he just has that energy. Yeah, but like seeing it so like close up, so like intimately, so raw, like. That had that has to be an experience that just like sat in your brain forever. Yeah, uh, a month later too, same venue. Uh, I didn't get to go to this. I really wanted to at the time, but Chance the Rapper came through off Acid Rap okay. tour. So like oh, very damn. early Chance came through as well. That Hell same yeah. venue in Little Montana. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that I think there was a point in time, especially with like those artists, where they were going and doing like spaces that weren't enormous you know what yeah. i mean like they were like trying to get into those places where like they were they they got to like pick places to go but they still had to like play the venues that were in those places yeah. and so i think that I, that was kind of a cool time for music for sure yeah for and sure even like from a strategy wise those guys were like big enough to like still sell tickets and tour yeah but like even at a lower level like the artists i'm touring with it's like kind of strategic to like pick the small towns because those small towns, those kids have nothing else to do. Oh yeah. And they see like a new artist coming into town. It's like, they're going to be there just to go have fun. Yeah. And then the next time you go there, you could play at a bigger place and they're going to be willing to travel because yeah. they remembered you. Yep. 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 All right. Now let's go ahead and dive into a little bit more of you. Like we, obviously we've talked about some music stuff. We'll circle back to some in a minute, but now let's talk to, about you as like the videographer. What was the first camera you ever had? A uh, little point and shoot um, snapshot. I keep wanting to say it's called a snapshot. That's a hundred percent wrong. I'm sure, but it was lime green. Um, I mean, it was probably the worst thing. I remember it was like, it was touch screens when touch screens came out. Gotcha. So like, you're like really Yeah, you touch it and like the button is like, yeah. over, like for some reason you keep yep. hitting the other side yep. if you get that one spot. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, filming the snowboarding videos with that and like editing my first videos footage from that. Okay. Now, are, are, do, are you like a winter sports person? I used to be. I've like really leaned off of it. I just can't afford it. Yeah, that's. I mean, <laughs> it gets really hobbies expensive. be expensive. Yeah, hobbies be expensive. Yeah. That's like the one thing they don't tell you. As you get older, <laughs> the things you love to do just become yep. more money. <laughs> now, this is kind of like a, this kind of like an in depth question. But do you remember the first shoot that you did where you had like control over the setting? Um. I mean, my second music video I really had was kind of the first, like, I got to pick locations and write stuff out. But my favorite video for this reason was Different Language by Lord Lawrence. It's mm -hmm. the second video I ever did with him. Yo, shout out Lord first Lawrence. First real one, because the first one we did was like a Christmas fun song. Um, but Different Language, he was the first artist who was like, I'll do anything you want to do. So he's like, pick the song from the album and just like, whatever you want to do, let's film it. And everything from start to finish on that process in that video was like 100% my idea. And to this day, it'll still like, it still might be one of the only ones that like, I mean, artists give me a lot of leeway and I'm yeah. super thankful and grateful for that. Um, but like, that was the first time and the only time where it's like 100%. He was like, yes, 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 yes. We'll do it. I mean, that's. That's very on brand yeah. for Lawrence. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like he's definitely got that kind of like that ability to be like, all right, you have a vision. Yeah, let's make it happen. For sure. Now, when you, when it comes to like putting those kinds of things together, do you do it visually? Do you do it through text? Do you like, do you like draw things or like you suppose, like how do you go about putting together a whole music video. Yeah, so I'll make them send me the song, and if your song's on Spotify, I'm going to make you my number one artist on Spotify because I'll just repeat the song nonstop when I'm driving until something just hits. And then when it comes to writing, I'll, I mean, I ha I use an app called Millinote, little secret there. It's basically just like a vision board, mm -hmm. and I'll create like a shot list exactly how I see the video being shot, like the angle the width, like what lens I'm going to use and like really detail it out. And then I'll create a color palette. I'll have like visuals for them or like even just like links to music videos that I want to like try to emulate. Okay. And I'll just send them that whole form. And if they like it, they like it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that's cool that you would like 
use that as a way of like, hey, these are my examples. Here are some like outside examples because yeah. I think that helps paint the picture really well. That's really interesting. Yeah, hundred uh, percent of my videos are definitely taken from other videos. I mean, <laughs> like, I, I think still that still you know, like an artist. <laughs> I think creativity breeds creativity. Yeah, you know what I mean? I 100%. think to be good at visual art, you have to enjoy visual art. Yeah. And it becomes your own thing. There's so many times where I'm like trying to like copy an effect like off a YouTube tutorial like so perfectly and it just doesn't work out and it slowly becomes my own thing. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, what if I actually change this instead of doing it like them? And then it's just kind of like your own thing. Hell yeah. Now, kind of in that vein, who are some who are some either photographers or videographers that you, that you enjoy, like that people that you like maybe not look to for like things to like do exactly but like th- like people who inspire you um two that come to mind my favorite like music video directors right now uh the big one dexter navy uh does all of, like asap rocky's really visual ones um lsd probably being the biggest one and i mean cole bennett i know everyone kind of knows cole bennett right now he's like top of the game he's like the biggest music video director um but just the way he's kind of be able to cr- create a brand with music videos it's pretty crazy hell yeah now go ahead and tell us about either your like your most favorite or your biggest or your wildest shoot ever like what was like the like the biggest moment or like the craziest moment or if they're like the same um it's a good question i mean not to like circle back to it but just for like the reasons that i said with lawrence on like him giving me like full creative uh it was just like one of the coolest things but i'm like super self-critical too and i almost never will go back and watch these videos oh no not 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 the video i mean like your the experience like like tell us about either like your craziest shoot or your most favorite shoot or just like a moment where like you were like ah like just i've been put in some weird (laughs) situations i mean i've got one person where i was in the studio with like I feel like they had like 10 pounds of weed just and like guns. Oh, <laughs> and God. Like, yep. Um, same artist had me like in the strip club till like 3 30 in the morning a few weeks ago, like filming. Um, There's a lot of like cliche rapper stuff they put me through. Fair. And like rap, like, I love rap music. I love working in it. But it's also like, I started with like rock bands and pop punk scene uh, and stuff. Yep. So I made the transition there. And so it was a little. There's like, I don't know, they each have their own little things. <laughs> no, totally. I mean, oh, yeah, long week, long, long evenings, apparently. Yeah. Oh, man, there's some people that keep me out. I'm like, guys, I got to go to bed at 10. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is too much. No, totally. Now, if you could work with any established artist, who would you work with? Um, so Post Malone's top of my list right now. Um. I think just his personality, I could like film pretty well. But like, who also doesn't love Post Malone? Yeah, he's he, like the top of the list for anyone. He's definitely Music, got an energy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's definitely got an energy yeah. to him. And it, who is a local artist that you're aware of and haven't had the opportunity to work with, but would like to? Um, so I'm gonna go outside the city a little bit to Tacoma, uh, but Travis Thompson. He's like someone I'm super a fan of for a long time. And I feel like it's somewhat attainable. I was, I'm only a few people away from them right now. I'm really starting to push it. Um, so I'm really hoping for that. Hell yeah. Now, what's your long-term goals? Like, what do you, what do you want out of this? Like, if you could, like, if, if, if the skies was the limit, you had no limitations, where would you, where do you think right now, at least, that you would like to settle if you could settle at something and keep it going? Um, well, I would definitely want to just direct and edit i think just direct and edit and like have a team built around me to like do all the stuff i'm not good at (laughs) or who can do it better than me i feel like there's always gonna be someone who can do it better than me um and just kind of like yeah delegating a little bit more i have some like crazy crazy like 10 20 year goals that almost don't even have to do with video but still music like i would love to like put on like some type of festival someday okay stuff like that so then it and now circling back to music related (laughs) stuff see how we do this you definitely have a big focus on i mean just like between listening to the music that you do for like putting the Mm -hmm. videos together and like just like your interaction with people all over the music place and just you know your your congruency with lawrence just you know through proxy do you like 
do you see yourself like making something bigger that stays like heavily music focused or do you want to expand outside of that to do like movies and things like that? I definitely have interest in movies. Um, and then and music. I don't know. I want to do everything, but who doesn't? No, totally. Um, I would love to do a movie. I've like tried to sit down and write an actual movie and I've gotten pretty far with some people. Um, just I feel like I've just never had the time or like I'm doing like so staying so busy with music videos. It's like I don't want to like sh- I'm scared to shift my focus, you know? Yeah. Like I don't want to like that's another reason why I don't like learn instruments as much as I want to. It's because I'm like, every time I like sit down, I'm like, this is two hours. I could have learned something new in like the editing software. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would love to do movies. I would love to expand. Um, like I said, like my, as far as like starting a festival, do you remember Summer Jam at the Gorge? No. They, it used to be, I don't think there's enough rap festivals in the Pacific Northwest. And they used to do Summer Jam which was put on by 105 point something, whatever, in okay. Seattle. Yep. And it was a rap festival that got canceled because someone got shot. But, like, I've been to plenty of festivals up there. People are dying all the time from <laughs> overdosing. And, oh, no. And I think that they just canceled it because it was rap music and they're racist. And mm. they banned Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg from up there. I was like, we got to bring that back. We're I more mean, civilized now. I w- <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I can definitely agree that I think that those kinds of, th- I mean, those kinds of things kind like the concept kind of went away for a little bit. Yeah. Like it got oversaturated and then it didn't exist for a little, I mean, nothing existed for a little while. Cause you know, yeah, those years we don't speak of, yep. but like, I think that that, and just that, like, what am I, am I trying to say this? Like there's a uh, there was an odd shift in collaboration for a little bit i think like mm-hmm. the existence of like multiple things existing as single entities existing as multiple things at the same time yeah. like there just wasn't a time where that happened in the same and I've, I've i've talked about this on other episodes like i think there was just a time where everybody like focused so hard on doing their own thing that we lost that now we now festivals are coming back oh yeah but they're like they're almost coming back too big. Like there's so many, like there's there's so many like four day festivals where like, they like obviously purposely spread out like the big, like the biggest bands and like the medium sized bands and the little bands that you'd want to see through all of them to try and make you want to go. And you're like, well, who has like $300 to like, just like, and then on top of that, like the travel fees and they like, it's, it feel like they like limit it to a degree. Cause they're like, look at all the things you get. And you're like, yes, but do you get to like, bond with the the performance like yes you have to watch it from like 800 people away yeah like you're watching the whole show on a screen that's displaying another screen like where you know where does it start so as like a (laughs) avid festival goer i mean like me and my wife go two or three times to different like big festivals a year also and congratulations thank you (laughs) and i always go into a festival even if there's someone i really want to see I always go into a festival as I'm here for the experience, yep. not for the music. Yes. And I can't get bummed when I miss someone or like we're really far away. I'll always pick one artist out of the festival that is like no negotiations. Yep. And then just the rest of the weekend's fun. It's yep. vacation. Yeah. You just keep moving to whatever sounds yep. good. I mean, that makes sense for sure. Yeah. Also, I, I mean, I'm still agreeing with you that I think those kinds of things need to come back in yeah. all their own ways. Now, as as an artist, as a as a as a person who creates, what do you feel that you do that like sets you apart? What do you feel is like your your, your calling card or your style? Like I know it's it's hard to pinpoint what you do. It's always kind of got to be other observations, but maybe based off of those, even like what do you feel is like the thing that defines the why not Nate experience? Um, I really try to stray away from like the super. Not that this is bad. I really love the style, uh, but like the hyper pop, really quick, super crazy effects. Gotcha. That's super trendy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and try to like go for just like more simple cinematic movie looking type stuff, uh, like really focus on symmetry and color um, more so than just like crazy things going on everywhere, totally. which is like I said, I still love, yeah. um, but just to like set myself apart. No, definitely. And I think that the, you know, the, the nice thing about it being a creative style is like, there's never a wrong way to do it. I think that's kind of the fun thing about it yeah. is like, even if there are rules, 
the, the, there's always ways to break them. There's always yeah. ways to like approach them differently. That some of them are more malleable than others. Obviously, you mm-hmm. leave you leave the lens cap on. You're not taking any video or pictures. Yeah. So like that, you know that that has to exist as it is. Yeah. But I think that there's a lot of room to do so many things, especially now the way stuff is accessible. Like especially like you know like Black Magic Design makes things that are just available in every platform. They're kind of breaking the boundaries of what you can and can't do. Mm-hmm. Shout out Black Magic Design. <laughs> uh, I happen to know. You use their cameras. I do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's not the reason why his stuff looks so good. It's because he's phenomenal <laughs> at it. But it's partly it why I like definitely it. <laughs> helps. I, you know, there, there's always the argument that like you can do, you can do anything with nothing. Mm-hmm. And then there's that argument that like the best stuff yields the best results. But I mean, when we talked about this a little bit off camera, but it's definitely a mix of both. Yeah, I agree. I think that a good setting shot with a good camera is only going to yield good results. Yeah. One thing like you definitely hear getting into videography over and over again is like gear doesn't matter. And like I get that, but I think they stress it a little too much. No, I think that I think that there are a lot of people who they grab high end gear because they think it will produce that. And then you're like, man, this video looks good physically. Yeah. But like, what did you do? And they're like, oh, well, I just yeah, I just like I like went like this. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, well, like, why did you go like this? Yeah, you yeah. know, and th- I mean, you're touching on that now, and I think it's kind of interesting to see the transition because I feel like you're really in that phase where you are moving out of the man behind the camera to the man behind yeah. the man with the camera. Yeah, and that's just you know that's that's such a fun step. I don't think that's something a lot of people talk about because even as a camera person, I feel like there's a lot of direction. Mm-hmm. Even if a camera is stationary, you're still doing direction. Yeah. So it's fun that you're like now at that spot where you're like, my vision is bigger than me as a person. Yeah. It, uh, I want to, I want to do like one more heady question before we wrap this up, Okay. but I don't exactly have it, <laughs> but like, I don't know. Do you, it, is there something that like you think is like big as far as like either a production approach goes or like a direction approach goes, but you would love to do like, if you could get your hands on the cameras that they used in the matrix to do all the like mm. stuff, like, yeah. would you like what, what's something that's like, it's not achievable right now, but like you would love to do it. Um, I mean, yeah, just kind of like what you said that different cameras is one thing. And, but my answer is going to sound really lame, but it really is like a big thing is budget for like location and set like i feel like we're really beating down the portland locations and just like or anywhere in that case like no matter what city you go into i really want to be able to have like a warehouse yeah and like build something out yeah and like really create anything i want like and have a team do it obviously yeah um rather than just like hey let's go find some graffiti on the wall (laughs) somewhere again yep no that makes sense and that's That is definitely like a next level thought. That's really cool to see. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. What are some big things you have coming up in like the end of June and onwards? Um, you know, I don't have any like crazy, crazy big things. I've got two with, I love McConan, which is pretty cool. Hell yeah. Um, being able to listen to him when you're younger and then shooting for him now. Um, as far as like artist wise, that's big. There has been like a project I've been pretty excited about that we've been working on. It's called, it's going to be a movie. That's what we named yep, it. Uh, I'm very aware. <laughs> and, uh, we're taking like six to eight different artists making one music video. Um, it's really hard to explain without just seeing no, the that, video. <laughs> well, I mean that the, it, it's funny because that concept kind of ties into what we were saying earlier about the festival stuff. Yep. Like how, like that, like collaborative effort. Now, are you get are, are they making a song for this where it's like they all kind of like perform through it or like can you can you go into it without giving yeah, too much away? So I'm happy to give it all away. Yeah, the share, first one's share the out vision. and the second one comes out tomorrow actually. Um, so no, they're not like making music. They can do an old song. They can do a new song. We've had people do old songs. We've had people do like new release and release it with the video. Um, but what we're doing is whatever song they want to send me, I get all eight of their songs. And I just just listen through them and see if they kind of line up at all. And just like I would with a normal music video, I was like, can I create a story out of this? Or we kind of learned quickly that you can't really create a story out of eight songs. And yeah. we're just like doing in-camera transitions to make it look cool. Um, but they'll play like 
They'll perform like 30 to 40 seconds of their song. And the whole idea behind the thing is just to promote each other. Hell and yeah. just like promote each other's pages, promote each other's music, uh, and connect artists and videographers. The goal is to me not even be a part of it. And like uh, next month we have Hitch directing. Um, the month after that we have James from Row Films directing. Okay. And different cameramen coming in. Um, and it's just so everyone can kind of like meet new people. Yeah. And we have a BTS videographer as well just as promotion so nice yeah that's it that's really cool yeah it's cool because you're like putting people in a spot to do something where it's like you are it's something you already do yeah. and it's cool because like you're like giving them the opportunity to direct so you're almost like directing the directing yeah by just being there to like almost learn through teaching that's yeah man as i think about this more and more that's a really cool approach yeah yeah and it's fun and it's stressful and we need more artists so yes <laughs> doing six to eight a month is like already proving to be this challenge it's a lot i mean I, i'm just thankful for all the ones that have been on here so far <laughs> yeah. now th this is such a like an obscure statement to make at this point in it do you remember early like sway in the morning like yeah. opening credits yep 100%. Okay. So like I remember the I remember I found out about Sway because there was one where it was like like Tech 9 was in it and Eminem was in it uh -huh. and like a few other I can't even it was so long ago. Yeah. But like I was just like what it because it was like the scenes kept changing like uh -huh. it was a lot of like like computer generated and like stuff like it was a lot of like you know like changes in things yeah. that were clearly digital but like it kept jumping from phenomenal artist to phenomenal artist to phenomenal art all doing their own free like i assume it's freestyles are doing their own verses in the but it was one video yeah and like when you said that originally i was like oh <laughs> yeah. so if you it, it, it if a, a cool project idea can come from that you should see about getting everybody to like do a thing yeah. That's like a big run thing. I think that would be a really yeah, cool experience. Really, yeah, for sure. And I just, I, I can't think of many things where I've like seen that other than like, you know, like the ciphers and things like that, where it's just people jumping yeah. from each other, which that is what it was. But and that's like where this came from is we were like trying to think of something to do for Opal Royalty, which is Lawrence's mm -hmm. like thing. Um, we want to like kind of create like a YouTube channel and do like different projects on it and stuff. And it started out with, like, how can we do, like, a Tiny Desk thing? How can we do, like, a Cypher thing? And it just evolved into, like, this to where it was kind of, like, maybe a little bit of our own original idea. Um, but it started from, like, watching Tiny Desks. Yeah. I mean, shout out Tiny Desk. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's, I am definitely a big fan. Yeah. Like, shout out Lawrence as well. He is definitely, like, we, we talked about it for many more minutes than we probably <laughs> yeah. should have. But I think that that... The first time I watched that, that was definitely like a moment for me because I was like, oh, like here are these huge artists that perform on the biggest stages ever. Yeah. Like, I mean, if, if y'all haven't watched Tobe Nwigwi's performances, like there and the at, at the crib performances, like the same concept, but it's just, it's just them in the room yeah. with like the minimal amount of things needed possible yep. to perform. So your performance has to carry it from there. Yeah. And that's just... I love the 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 intimacy of it. I love the like the opportunity to see the music almost on a foundational level. Yeah, and I like that, that that's really powerful. And there's so many different types too, not just like Tiny Desk. I can't name anything other than Tiny Desk because they're like kings. But I've seen one where they do it in the back of a Bronco. Yep, like just driving down like a dirt road, and like it's just a mic and a guitar. Yeah, I've seen like cabin sessions, and yeah, there's so many like cool ones. I think it's really cool how accessible that kind of stuff is now, like not, not like accessible like you can just go and do it but yeah. like you're able to do that yeah. more with like l less essentially mm -hmm. but like it's it's able to be done well yeah and that like that's just gonna breathe a whole like i don't think a renaissance is the right word yeah but it's definitely going to at some point become a way that like we no longer put stuff as like a small, like tangible spot. It's like performing the music, I think is going to become important. -er. Yeah. Because like right now, like, yes, going to shows, doing things is so big, but also I think that we as like creators, there's this, like the, this opportunity to do things 
in front of people without being in front of people. So you can learn the motions. People can see you grow. People can see you gain from it. And there's, you know, there's always the argument of oversharing. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you're sharing for the sake of progress, like they're displaying progress, yeah. that there's always going to be opportunities like yeah, that. For sure. <clears throat> All right. Now we we are <laughs> wrapping this up. We are wrapping this up. How can people connect with you? Uh, Instagram is about the only thing I run these days. I've changed my password like nine times, so I don't get hacked. <laughs> um, but yeah, why not Nate on Instagram? Um, I mean, my email is contact at whynotcreatives.com. But yeah, just DM me and yeah. I'll probably answer. And uh, can they find you on YouTube for like your work and things like that? Actually, no. Um, oh. I had a YouTube. I do have a YouTube, but it's like my experiment place where I like put like little short films or oh, like gotcha. little, it's like my little creative outlook. I don't like have an audience or anything. And I actually just changed my name to Opal Royalty. So oh. there might be some stuff going on there. Oh, okay. so, a little foreshadowing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Instagram, you can see all my stuff. I like to keep the artist music videos on their channels. A lot of people, like a lot of videographers, have their channels and it's a super smart business mood move. But since a lot of people are already doing it, I just like have your video, put yeah. it on your channel. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Now, ooh, I almost asked the final question too early. <laughs> any shout outs, any plugs? Like it, hype up the crew. Oh, so many. Um, Opal Royalty, Lord Lawrence. Um, he's the only reason I'm anywhere I'm at in this city. Um, couple artists before him even that aren't together, but I'll still shout them out. My friend, The Monster, they really hooked it up in Portland. Um, Lance Pettis, when I was in Phoenix with The Takeover, they all started my career. Um, Raymond Barnett, he's an artist I'm really working with lately. Um, and then my new videographer, BTS, uh, Zach goes by Crimson Leo Lolita, Crimson Lolita. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, man. We've made it to the end. We've got one more. And as an avid listener of the show, I know you already know what it is <laughs> and we're all very excited. What is your guilty pleasure song? Um, so I'm like low key, really into like popular, like female pop artists. Uh, and this is a song I don't think you're going to know or anyone's going to know, but it's Mimi Webb and the song is Ghost of You. Oh. <laughs> I don't know where I heard it. It was probably on like top 40 or something like that. Um, but it's just catchy. Yeah, it's I mean, vibey. It, it, if it vibes, it vibes. I'm That's... all into that. Like, you know, Taylor Swift. I love Noah Cyrus. Hell yeah. But Mimi Webb. <laughs> Mimi Webb's the bay right now. Okay. Okay. Well, y'all, we can't put it at the end of this, but still go listen to it. <laughs> it's just... It's probably going to be a fun track. Yep. And, unless y'all listen to the uh, the the Guilty Pleasure track from Hydru. That was just funny. Like, <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you. I'm not going to shout out another episode on an episode, but <laughs> if y'all listen to the Guilty tra Pleasure track on that one and you're still listening to them, y'all are the goats just for that. But that being said, we are going to officially close things up. This has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Why Not Nate? And we're signing off. <laughs>